Um, we're going to go through the API today. Um, I would love for all of you to take a, a minute or two to fill out our welcome form. We've got some 600 people on here. I would love to know who's on, what you do. Um, you can just go to that URL, cut.ly slash monday-api-webinar. Go ahead and fill that out, and um, we can then get started with understanding who's here. And this is a Monday form. Um, the, the welcome form and it'll bring, and whenever you fill it out, it's going to populate onto this board and wow, we've already got a bunch of people who've already filled it out. I see key here is in marketing and does web development. Got, um, a few folks from the C-suite in education and travel, um, a bunch of people, uh, on, in IT, uh, telecom, um, a, another SaaS person in, in implementation. Hi everyone. Ooh, amazing. We've got more and more people joining. As we start, this is wonderful to see so many people joining us. Um, as y'all fill this out, and I'll come back to this in a little bit, let's go ahead and talk about our agenda for today. So to begin with, we're gonna talk a little bit about our API at a high level. Uh, why do we wanna use our API? What is an API? And how can I use it to connect monday.com to other tools? Um, after that, I'm gonna go through a bunch of examples. Um, we're gonna start with a couple of examples of applications that we've already built, um, just showing you how you can pull data from various places into monday.com and also create more flexible integrations uh, and automations. Um, after that, um, we're gonna get kind of technical. Uh, we're gonna talk about GraphQL, which is the technology that our API is built on. Uh, and we're going to then make some API calls. So I'm going to structure this so that we start high level and get more and more technical as we go down. Um, and what that means is if you aren't super technical, that doesn't matter. Go ahead and stay on and watch us do these examples because I think you will get a lot of value from the first little bit. Um, so let's get started. I want to go back to that form and see um, what we have filled out, who's in the room with us. So right here, we've got a bunch of people, uh, a lot of people in software development, project management, um, a, lot of different, um, a lot of different industries right here. Let me go ahead and turn this into a chart. Um, and we can see if there are what the most number of um, people come from. So we see that a lot of folks are coming from IT from marketing, from manufacturing. As people are joining, this, this chart is, is getting updated. Um, but this is super cool to see that we've got so many people here in the room with us and um, working with us on this webinar. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about our API. What is an API and why should we use it? So to begin with, our API is a layer that you can use to feed data in, in and out of your monday.com account. Uh, so this could be either from homegrown tools that you use internally, from other SaaS applications, or even from monday.com itself. You, if you want to use your, our API to take data from one board and put it onto another board, you can definitely do that as well. Really what we want to do with, our, with the API is we want to build integrations that will break down those data silos, right? ensure that your teams can connect across different platforms so you don't have to worry about only the customer success team being able to get insights from Zendesk tickets, for example. We also want to minimize grunt work. You can use the API to take manual work out of the equation, um, send data from one place to another instead of having to construct a new report every six weeks by exporting three Excel documents, doing a VLOOKUP to add everything together, and then sending it to your director, you could write an integration that automatically does all of that for you and puts it on a Monday board. You could even create charts like we created just now um, and have that report automated within minutes. Um, and you could even build custom workflows. So what I mean by that is having different workflows in monday.com uh, that are really adjusted to your needs. If, you're, if you have a board where uh, you assign a contractor on one board and you want it to appear on the contractor specific board, you can do that with our API. You can create all sorts of custom workflows to ensure that you are expanding the limits of monday.com and build your monday.com workspace to work for you. Really, the way that I'm, I think about our API is it makes monday.com more monday.com-ish. Um, it makes it more flexible. It makes it easier to communicate with your, with your team. 
and it just makes everything better and everyone happy. So let's go ahead and show a couple of examples. I'm gonna show you three examples of integrations um, with our API. Now, because of the technical difficulties in the beginning, um, I will need to set some stuff up, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the fly and I'm gonna show you how I do it as well. So those of you who are more technical can, can understand what's going on. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen again. And you'll see my terminal window right here. Um, I'm just gonna use it to run some code. So to begin with, I'm just gonna go to my API webinar uh, folder. And we're gonna look at our first integration, which is a Zendesk integration. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about this integration before I show you what it looks like. Um, so this is a board where I want to see all of the tickets that I myself, deepro at monday.com, have touched in the last week. Um, the data in Zendesk is pretty siloed in that only customer success can access that application. And I wanna pull that out and show other stakeholders in our business um, what I've been working on for the last week. Who have I been talking to? What have I been talking to them about? Um, and I also wanna see historical data. I wanna see stuff from the last week and not um, necessarily a real-time sync. Um, this will let me track the work that I'm doing in a personalized way and really showcase the work that I'm doing um, as we speak. So let's go ahead and run this application. Um, I created a Python script. Um, I'm gonna send you the code for all of this in a little bit after this, uh, after this webinar, but let's go ahead and just get started. So when I run this code, it pings the Zendesk API to get a list of all of the tickets that I have touched in the last week based on a search term. After that, it goes in and it adds every single ticket, the subject of the ticket, the status, whether it's new, it's open, or if it's a ticket that's already been solved in here with a link directly to the Zendesk uh, itself. Um, so this is super cool. I would love for you to put in the chat what you think. Give me a, give me a smiley face if you think that's cool. Awesome. I see a lot of smiley faces. We are getting started. Good, to, good stuff. Um, I see that there are lots of folks who want to do this with Freshdesk as well. You can do it with Freshdesk. Um, as long as the other application has an API, you can pull this information from Freshdesk's API, then you can write an application that sends this data to monday.com uh, using our API. Remember that our API is just a layer that you can use to send data to monday.com. So it doesn't matter where that data comes from, you can just send it directly into monday.com. Um, you could also do that with uh, Jira and a bunch of other applications if you need. Um, in terms of other questions, do go ahead and put any ongoing questions uh, in the Q&A section. Uh, there's a little Q&A chat. Um, we do have 600 people here. There's gonna be a lot of chatter in the chat um, and I will probably miss your question. So go ahead and put that in the Q&A section instead so that we can put all the questions in one place. So this is the Zendesk integration that we showed you. This is awesome for pulling data in, in one shot um, based on historical trends. Um, I wanna show you a couple more examples um, that are Monday to Monday automations. So the next integration that I'm gonna show you is based on a real use case that, our, that one of our clients reached out to us about. Um, we, and it's, it's a pretty common use case. So this client uses a lot of different contractors. And these are people who are external to their team so they don't have access to the entire monday.com account. They only have access to one shareable board that is just a list of all of the tasks that they do. Um, and this is a board that kind of looks like this for Deeper Obhomic, the contractor. It's just a list of current projects as well as what's done. Now they send tasks to each of these contractors from a high level board and their management team tracks this. This is the internal project board. Uh, they use this to list out everything that they're working on right now, and they use a drop-down column right here to assign the contractor. Now, what this integration will do is it will take the data from that drop-down column using a webhook 
and send it to the individual contractor's board um, if it exists. So we're using a webhook right here in the integration section. Um, and I'm, I'm sending this to an application URL, um, which actually has broken now because I had to restart my computer. So we're gonna, sh we're gonna see how you uh, set this up as well. So I'm gonna go back to um, my terminal window. I'm gonna go to the folder that this exists in, um, which is called Crossboard Automation. And this is kind of an ongoing integration that will s where monday.com will ping my server to when the dropdown column changes. And then my server will then do something with that information uh, if it's a contractor, uh, if, if the contractor has changed. So what that means is there are, there's a back and forth. So I do need a public URL that this, this um, integration can uh, connect up to, or rather I can send the webhook to. So for that, I'm just gonna use ngrok. Um, this is, a, I think one of my favorite tools in terms of, um, in terms of creating public URLs. What this will do is it'll just create a, a public URL that you can then copy and paste into the webhook and it's wonderful for, for testing. And I'm also gonna go ahead and run this code. Okay, so now it's listening. I'm gonna go in and update this webhook. So a webhook will basically send data to a URL when something changes. In this case, when a column changes, it's gonna send a, a payload of information to the URL that I specified. Um, so now this, is, this has been sent. Now let's go ahead and add some items and get this integration running. So let's go ahead and fill out some projects. Um, do y'all have ideas on the kinds of projects that we would like to fill this task with? Can you please put them in the chat? Put like, I, I'm gonna take three or four. So if everyone gives me one, I'll have 600, plenty to deal with. Implement monday.com API, I love that. Build a fresh desk integration. Eat tacos. I love it. And have a beer. I like these last two. Um, all right, so we've got four different items that I want to assign contractors to. Um, I'm now gonna go ahead and assign Deepro to this, uh, to this item. What I expect to happen is that item is gonna then go and appear on the Deepro board. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so some stuff is happening. Let's go ahead and open up Deepro and boom. Implement Monday.com API has appeared here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm watching for a, for a webhook and then creating a new item on whatever board um, it should be created on. Um, I can also do that for Eddie for building the Freshdesk integration and for uh, eating tacos and Eddie's board will also get updated. Um, what's, what I particularly like about this integration is if I add a new contractor, I don't have to worry about creating a new board for them manually because the integration will do that for me. So let's go ahead and create a new contractor. I'm just gonna use uh, one of the last people on the chat and I apo apologize, Misail, uh, but I'm gonna use your name. <laughs> uh, so right there. And when I assign them to a, an item, it'll create a board for them. Let's go ahead and see that right here. If I search for a missile, boom, their board has been created. Um, if you open the board, you'll notice that it is created with the same template that the other boards are created with and have a beer is already populated. So I don't have to worry about adding missile to a new board, creating a new board, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is already handled by the integration. Now I'm gonna move this to the, the folder that we've been using. Um, just so that we keep everything in one place. Um, and now I can add Missile to a bunch of other things too. Um, so if I wanted to, to create coffee and add Missile to that one, that connection is gonna happen and it'll work. So Missile will now get coffee there as well. Um, this is a super cool integration. I thought that um, the use case was really, really relatable and I thought I, I'd share. Um, we're, we are going to show you, uh, so after this email, uh, after this webinar, I'm going to send an email to all of you 
uh, with step-by-step -step instructions on how to set this up. I've got a GitHub repository that has all of these examples listed in there as well as instructions on how to set them up. So if you're looking for any of that, hang tight. In the next couple of days, I will send that out. If you can't wait and need it ASAP, you can always reach out to support at monday.com and they can do that. Um, All right, and a few people have questions about this particular um, about this particular integration. I will handle them in the Q and A right at the end. Do go ahead and put them in the Q and A section so that I look at them because otherwise this will get lost in the chat. All right, so now we've gone through two examples: one where we're taking data from another platform, Zendesk in this case, and bringing it into Monday.com in a pretty structured way, in a very custom way. I only want the last week of, of tickets in here. And I can do that using our API. And I've got another use case right here where I'm creating an, uh, uh, an ongoing automation uh, between monday.com boards. Um, and I'm doing that in a really customized way based on the workflow that I want instead of maybe the workflow that someone else has given me. Um, so we can really use this to create custom flows. Uh, the third integration that I'm going to show you is not work related at all. It's tic-tac-toe. I'm just going to show this to you. Let's go ahead and quit the previous integration that we created and go back to, to, the, um, to the folder that, that this exists in. And just like, the other, um, just like the other application, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an application server right here. Um, so this is on port 8080. Just going to copy this webhook URL. Uh, start the application. And put the webhook in here. OK. And I think something messed up, so I'm going to just quit that and run this again. Oh, I know what the problem is. Uh, <laughs> um, this is the wrong version of Tic-Tac-Toe. This is the version that I uploaded to GitHub. So it doesn't have any of my API keys and stuff. So let me go ahead and fix that. Um, just give me one second while I traverse um, my entire folder structure. Um, all right, let's see if this works. All right, now the moment I hit play, it cleared the cells. So I know that this is working. Amazing. Um, and this is tic-tac-toe. It's exactly what, what it looks like. Um, the human player plays circles. So if I try and play an X, it's going to tell me, nope, you can't play X. And I'm just going to put a circle. And then the computer is going to play an X. I'm going to play a circle right here. Let's see if the computer beats me. Nope, not at all. Um, this is quite a stupid computer. And I'm going to put a circle right here, and boom, I win. Ta-da, done. Um, so that's tic-tac-toe. The way that this works is we're using that webhook, again, to listen for updates from this board. And every time an update is made, I'm just uh, using the integration to update a new, a new status column based on what was in there. So if I play a circle here, then the integration is going to play an X somewhere else and not here, and so on and so forth. Um, so we've got that back and forth going again. And we've uh, got it going uh, because of the webhook. Um, yes, someone in the chat said that AI won't be able to uh, take over the world and rule humans because it's not super smart. And this is proof of that. And I totally agree. Um, this is just proof that the robots will not take over. OK, so those are all of our examples. Um, I hope this was helpful in understanding how the API can make things happen and get those creative juices flowing in terms of what, I, what you can do with the API to really expand your use of monday.com to other use cases. Um, we're now going to talk about 
um, GraphQL, we're going to talk about our API, get a little bit more nitty gritty, but just so that we can talk through the technical documentation. I'm just going to go ahead and close this, by the way, and um, open up some slides. Um, so let me go ahead and hit present. So to begin with, um, our API is built on GraphQL. Now, you don't have to read through this yet because we'll come back to this in detail, but GraphQL is an application layer that uh, uses, uh, that lets you um, take the data in your boards, the relationships in your boards, and get data based on those relationships. I really, really like GraphQL because it lets you leverage those relationships to get related data. Um, and I'm gonna show you kind of what I mean um, in monday.com. So let's go ahead and open up a board and let's talk through some of the relationships on this board uh, because those relationships are also maintained in our API. So to begin with, of course, this is a board. The board itself has some uh, details that are specific to this particular board, such as the board title, the board ID, which you can find in the URL, and of course, via the API, um, and some of the other configuration, um, such as having groups. Each of these groups, it's also an object in and of itself, right? A group is important. It contains items. It has a color. It has a position on it. And every group has items in it. Every board also have, has items in it. Um, so we've got that relationship between the board, items, groups. And as you go down the item, we've got columns. And you've got three different columns here. Each column has values inside it. So we've got a column value. And based on the type of the column, so the person, status, date, whatever, the data inside this column is different, right? So a person column doesn't have the same kind of data that a date column does because of course, people and dates are different. Um, so all of this is um, exposed in our API. Um, the column itself also has some, some information in it, right? It's got a title got some column settings, it's got a type, right? this is a person column, this is a status column, and so on. And um, each board also has a set of, of columns. So all, all I'm trying to say is that there are pieces of data in monday.com and they all have relationships. Um, you can use a board to get the items on the board. You can take an item and want to get the column values on this board. And based on our use case and based on how we as humans interact with the, with the platform, uh, these relationships are important. And so what that also means is it's important to be able to get data in a way that preserves and leverages these relationships. And that's what monday.com, that's what GraphQL is super good at. Um, let's go into some nitty gritty and go back to that board. I go back to that uh, presentation slide, sorry, um, and talk through what you're really doing when you're making an API call in GraphQL. So I mentioned earlier that GraphQL is an application layer between you and monday.com. Uh, what this means is it's a little bit different from other APIs such as REST APIs that you're thinking of. Um, it's not a set of resource URLs. Instead, it's a, it's a, a layer that you can send a query to. Um, similar to if you would send an SQL query or something like that. Um, based on the data inside that query, how the query is structured, what you're specifying in the query, you're going to get different pieces of data. Um, and this is based on the relationships of the data on your boards or in your account um, and what they represent. So at a high level, every object in monday.com, whether it's a board, it's an item, it's a group. They all contain fields. Um, so an item, for example, has an ID. A board has an ID, a name, and it also has items on it. And each of these fields uh, can be a primitive, so a string or, a, um, or an integer. This is what's showing up in purple. Or it could be an object itself, right? Which means a board could contain items, and each of those items contains an ID. That's what I'm showing right here, where um, your query is structured in the same way that a graph would be structured, right? Where you're um, getting data from one object and then possibly also nesting another object within it. Um, so yeah, you can, in your query, you're specifying what objects and fields you want to return and you can return nested objects in that. Um, 
the entry point for this is always query. And then after that, you can go to boards, you can search for items and so on and so forth. Um, and you can, for each of these items, they often have an ID. So you can just query for the ID and get the ID back. So if I want the IDs of every single board on my account, I can do that using this query. Um, but yeah, so this is a query. Um, I don't want to get too in depth with this. I just want to, I just want to show you the high level headspace that you want to be in when you're thinking about our monday.com API. Um, there's a ton of documentation that will go through in depth how to construct these queries. I just want to explain that GraphQL, we're thinking about objects and we're thinking about graphs and not necessarily thinking about resource URLs like you might be thinking about in, um, in REST. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that the way you structure a query is you start with query and then you put in the object that you are trying to uh, ask for. So I want to get boards. I want to get some kind of data on the boards. And specifically what I want to get is I want to get the ID of the board. I want to get the name of the board and I want to get all the items on the board. And for each item, I want to get an ID. The way that I like to think about it is each word in here is um, a node in the graph and each curly bracket is an edge. And so we're using this query to kind of transfer from one object to another and so on. Um, a lot of people are asking about the presentation and recordings. And just to clarify, um, I will be sending this recording um, and all of this, the information that we're going through, because I know we're going through a lot, um, to everyone who is on here and also the people who are not on here, uh, just to ensure that you have all of the data and can, can re recreate all of this, because it is complicated. And really, the intention of this webinar is to get you started, to get those creative juices flowing, and to um, kind of open the conversation for more talks about the API. All right, so now that we've got this anatomy of a query down, um, and we'll go through some more examples of queries in a little bit, let's talk a little bit about the difference between GraphQL and REST. Um, just quickly in order to, to put some preconceptions out of the way. So a lot of APIs that um, are out there are REST APIs. So what this means is they're structured differently. The way you get data from them is different um, from the way you get data from GraphQL. And I just want to want to lay lay out what those differences are, um, especially the, the, the questions that people often ask. To begin with, we only have a single endpoint for our API. It's called api.monday.com slash v2. Um, unlike REST, where there's a different endpoint for each operation or for each resource, um, where you just only have to worry about one URL. You just point every request to that one URL. Same with the HTTP method. Um, we only are looking for post requests. Um, unlike REST, where you can send a get to get a, a particular resource, you can post, change something, and so on and so forth. We only care about posts. Um, the data that you want to send um, to our API is going to be in the post body. Unlike in REST, where you often send it in the URL parameters, if you send your parameters um, as in the URL, uh, our API is not going to accept that and we'll send you a 400. So do go ahead and send it in the post body instead. I'll show you some examples in the future. Read operations are queries. Um, so in the operation that you write out, uh, you're going to use the word query at the top. And that's basically the same as a get endpoint in REST. And then for all write operations, you're going to use a mutation. This is a specific word for GraphQL. And it basically means I'm changing data. Um, and this is the same as if you were to use a put, post, delete, and so on in REST to modify data. All of that is in a mutation. And best of all, what's cool about GraphQL is that you can return a custom set of data very easily. While in REST, you're kind of limited to the specification of uh, how each endpoint is. So maybe each endpoint will always give you the same five fields. And if you only need two of them, you will still get the remaining three regardless. With GraphQL, you don't have to worry about that. You can say, I only want to get the ID of this item. I know that it has a name. I don't need it right now. And we won't give it to you. We'll only give you the data that you ask for, which makes it super flexible and makes it uh, very easy to parse out the data that you need and uh, not have to worry about extraneous information. 
All right. Um, if you have any questions about all of this, remember, put that in the Q&A section. Um, we will be going through the Q&A right at the end. Um, there are 40 or 50 questions in there, so we may not have time for everything, uh, but we will try and get through as much as possible. And if your question doesn't get answered, I'll talk to you about how you can get that answered in a little bit. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and, nope, this is too early. Um, we're now gonna go ahead and make some examples. Of course, I know I've been talking about them a lot, but it's nice to, to actually play around with it. And for that, we're gonna start by going to our developers page. So this is our API documentation. You can get there by going to developers.monday.com or to monday.com slash developers slash v2. Um, I will send this to you and all of these resources in uh, the follow-up email that I send you. Um, but this is where you can see our GraphQL schema. You can see all of the different queries that you can make uh, with boards and each field on each of those objects and the mutations as well. And there's some other information as well about rate limits and, and so on and so forth. Um, what I really like about this documentation though is that there is a try it yourself page. So right here, when you click try it yourself, it's gonna open up a new window. Um, and this is a testing environment. So this is super great for if you want to start playing around with some queries. Remember, this is an application layer. So um, we're, we can just send out queries and play around to understand what data we're getting back. Uh, you can do all of that using our Try It Yourself page. Um, I think it's really, really helpful to start understanding how GraphQL works and to see how the data in your, um, in your account is structured. So to start with, of course, I need to fill out my API key. Um, to do this, I'm gonna go to the admin section. I'm gonna go to API, I'm gonna hit copy, and I'm gonna put it in here. So right there, that's the API key. Um, Right now, only admins can access their API tokens, um, but in the future, we want everyone to be able to um, access uh, the API. I'm glad someone else also heard that uh, that doorbell ring. Um, I thought it was just in my head. No, so, um, this is Shelly. I'm here with Ron, one of our Hello. developers, and we're here just if you have any specific questions, maybe technical a bit more, um, he's here to help also, so go ahead and ask him whatever you guys want. Amazing, thank you so much. No problem. All right, um, so we're going through um, some examples right now, um, and then we'll finish up with some questions. Um, so yeah, if you have more technical questions that uh, you want a developer to answer, or if you have any feedback, do go ahead and put that in the Q&A. We would love to see that and pass that along to our developer development team as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, making some queries. Uh, just as a high level, we're gonna go through four queries um, and all of this is going to be sent after as well. So you don't have to worry about missing it. Um, the first query we're gonna get is exactly what we were talking about before. I wanna get the boards on my account. I only wanna get one board because I have a lot of boards on my demo account as you saw. And I wanna get the ID for that board. I wanna get the name of that board and I wanna get the items on that board. Now when I hit play, it's gonna execute that, um, that query and it's gonna give me all of the IDs from this board, which is the API example board. Um, so right here, I've got a boards object and it's an array of every board. In this case, there's only one. And then for each object in that array, I am getting the ID, the name and the items. Um, so, so that's the data that's getting returned. That's the query, this is reading data. If I wanted to change this, remember I mentioned that GraphQL is super flexible. If I didn't wanna get the name of this, this board, if I was very confident in the name of this board, I could hit play and it's not gonna send me the name. Alternatively, if I wanted to get some other information about the board as well, so let's say I wanted to get, let's go ahead and look at the board object and see what other fields I can get. Ooh, if I wanted to get the description of the board, I could do that and hit go. I don't think this has a description. It does not. So let's go ahead and open up a board that does have a description. Um, right here, it's that who's in the room board that has all of your wonderful names and occupations on it. I'm gonna specify that in the ID and I hit play and boom, I get the description of the board um, as a string um, and I also get the name and ID. Basically everything that I'm asking for, I'm returning, nothing more, nothing less. So that is a query. Um, that is how to get the boards on your item. 
on, on your on your account. Um, it's super simple and you can use this to build out a bunch of other more complicated queries. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an item on a board um, and we're going to use uh, this this test board right here. This is a board. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, ID in the board right here. So for every mutation, the way that I like to think about it is you're making a function call. And in this particular case, you're making a create item function call. And there are two parameters that you need to give it. You need to give it, what is the item going to be called? So the item name, and you need to give it the board ID. So I just put in the board ID super quickly. Um, and I'm going to add this, um, change this item name as well to, hey, Ron and Shelly. And I'm going to hit play. And boom, it's going to create an item. And I asked for the item ID back. And so it gave me the item ID back. And let's go ahead and open up the board. And boom, hey, Ron, hey, Shelly, you're on the board now. Um, so right there, super simple, just creating an item. The next thing that you're going to want to do with, your API, with the API is you're going to want to change a column value. So in this case, I want to change the column ID, which is status, to done. Um, in order to change a column value, I need to know which cell I want to change. And so I need to know the board that it exists on. I need to know the item ID of the item that I want to change. And I need to know what kind of column I'm changing. So typically the column ID, every column has an ID. It'll be something like status, text, status three, so on and so forth. Um, it, you can you put the column ID in here and it will then update that relevant status. Uh, and I also need to give it the value. Now, take note here, every single column has a different type, which means it ingests different pieces of data and ingests data in a different structure. In this case, I'm, I wanna change a status column. And let's say I wanna change uh, this particular status for Ron and Shelley to a done label. Let's add a done label. Um, so what that means is, in order to change the status, I need to tell it which label to, to put. And I'm gonna do that by using the label parameter right here. And I'm just gonna say label equals done. Uh, now I do need to change these IDs to make sure they match. So I'm gonna make this board and I'm gonna change the item of the, uh, the item ID of this newly created item, which I'm gonna get from the URL. And I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna hit play and boom, I didn't get any errors. And when I open up this item, this has been changed to done. So when I was showing you that tic-tac-toe example, it's this status that was being changed. Um, and th th this is the, the API call that I was making in order to change those statuses. Um, just change the label to an X, change the label to an O, and so on and so forth. So now you know how to uh, change a specific column on a on a board. Now, how do you change multiple columns? And specifically what I want to do is I want to heavily multitask. I want to create an item. And when I create the item, I want to um, add the a couple of column values. And in order to do that, um, what I need to do is I need to specify in the same way as earlier, the name of the item. I need to specify the board ID and it's gonna be this board ID that we've been playing with so far. And I'm going to change the status column right here. Um, in order to change the status column, what I need to do is ensure that it's in JSON format. Uh, let me expand this a little bit so you can see better. Uh, but this column value structure is a JSON string. Um, each key in the JSON string, remember that a JSON string is basically a dictionary. So there's a key and a value for every key. Um, this, uh, this JSON string is, oops, this just jumped out at me. Um, is, is the column ID. So earlier the column ID was status right here. I'm, I'm putting it in as the JSON string. Sorry, this keeps jumping. Column ID goes in here as the key. And then after that, what I was putting in as value over here, I just put it after the colon, which is label equals one. So if you wanted to add multiple column values um, in one shot, all you would do is add the second column, column two, and put in uh, the various uh, pieces of data that you want to send through. Um, you'll also notice that I have a lot of backslashes in here. This is because I have some inner strings inside outer strings. Um, when you're using the try it yourself page, you're going to want to ensure that you're backslashing or escaping the inner strings to make sure that um, 
we don't get confused about which where the string is. Um, and you can see the syntax for every single column type in our documentation. There's a section specifically for updating columns. So let's go ahead and hit play. And what I should see is a new item on that board that says, hey friends, with the label done. And boom, there we have it. Um, since we are running out of time, um, I'm not gonna show you the last um, item, or actually I'm gonna show it to you, but I'm not gonna walk you through it too much. It's basically items by column values. This will let you filter to just the items that have a specific column value. In this case, I want to get the items that have done in the status on this particular board. And when I hit play, it's gonna send me, I think seven-ish, yeah. Seven different items from this board. This is a, this is a testing board, but let me show, show it to you quickly. Um, and you'll see that the seven items that are returned here are also gonna be the seven items that are marked as done. So right here, these seven, it's a testing board. There's a lot of crap on here, but um, you'll see that the data here that is returned is also on the board. So there you have it. Um, a couple of queries that you can start playing around with. Um, I wanna quickly also show you how you could do this in Postman. Uh, so how you structure uh, the individual request and then we'll move to questions. So let me go ahead and pull Postman out over here. If you're not familiar with Postman, it's basically an application that lets you test out API requests. It lets you specify which endpoint you're going to, what the HTTP verb is, specify all the headers and all that good stuff. And I'm gonna use this to quickly show you how you would structure um, an API call. And again, I'm gonna send this to you after the, um, the webinar, so don't worry about not getting it all. Um, so to begin with, as I mentioned before, we want all of our API calls to be post requests. So I'm gonna make this a post, and I'm gonna send it to our single GraphQL endpoint, which is the API uh, URL. After that, for authorization, I'm going to uh, put a key value pair into the header. Specifically, I'm gonna put authorization as the key, colon, and then my API key. After that, in the body, um, this is the query that we used before, kind of. Um, it's a little bit simplified, but it's basically pulling the ID and the name of this particular board. And you'll notice that what I need to do is I need to start with query colon. Now this indicates to our server that what comes after this is the query that you want to execute. Um, if it's a mutation, you would also put your mutation after this query uh, right here. So it would be like mutation, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then you would put whatever you want in here. I like to remove all the white spaces and the enters just to make sure that there aren't any parsing errors. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit send and it says not authenticated because I need to check my API key, I guess. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, right here, let's go back to admin, do API in the admin section, copy the personal API token and paste it in here. And now hit send and boom. I have got my high level projects board, the name and the ID as specified in the query. So I know that was super quick um, in terms of going through those examples. I just wanted to make sure that we get through as much as possible so it's helpful for folks. Um, and we are gonna switch over now to talk a little bit about, um, to go through questions. Um, just to recap, if you have any other questions or you need more help, you can always go to our knowledge base at monday.com support for some general articles on our API.